Sharon, you, you made such a great reference uh, in our conversation to not just, not just that the church should include relationship, but that relationship should be real, it should be authentic, it should be of a particular kind. And when we imagine a youth group, they know all about relationships. They're in relationships in the sports team, they're in relationships in the AP class, they're in relationships in the dreaded lunchroom tables. <laughs> They come in with an idea of relationship, but you want to bring something out in them, bring a spirit into mm -hmm. them that changes their understanding of relationship. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. I want to talk about practicing curiosity. So first to say this, in Galatians 5, we read about the fruit of the Spirit, and to make note that the Spirit is what actually produces the fruit, but certainly there are practices that we can lean into. Um, the Spirit never forces, so how is it that we lean into the Spirit? So what about leaning into forgiveness? The Spirit produces love. The Spirit produces patience. How do we lean into those? So I think about the practice of curiosity, teaching that to teenagers. Um, so someone writes a text, the other person gets offended, um, they've interpreted it one way, or it was actually mean in and of itself, whatever that is, there's, there's a feeling right away where there's disconnect between two people. To practice curiosity teaches teenagers to go, huh, that hurt, this is what it felt like, I wonder what they meant. And the capacity to engage another um, and work through, lean into the power of the Spirit so that there's the possibility for forgiveness and patience and self-control rather than just right away um, Snapchatting back something um, that's hurtful because that's our, our first reaction. That's what it would look like for a community of kids to try and practice, practice curiosity.